you're watching the AI report, we have some pretty crazy story to cover today. Let's get into it. The IRS is planning to use AI to catch rich people trying to avoid doing regular people stuff. You know, like obeying the law and paying taxes and other little annoyances. The new AI technology will help the IRS collect unpaid taxes from high earners, partnerships and large corporations as well, while also pledging not to increase audits on US citizens making less than $400,000 a year, which I guess is now the threshold for poverty. Well, honestly, tax evasion is one of my favorite hobbies. In fact, I consider it my citizen duty, since I live in a country that's corrupt beyond redemption. The only part that's missing for me to care about this piece of news is me being rich and living in the US. Seriously though, the rich always manage to find ways to game the system and bend the rules in their favor. Let's see how they're gonna try and do the same with AI. In other partially related news, SEC chairman and man with unusually sparkly eyes for an SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, <laughs> confirmed that the SEC will use AI to detect financial fraud and manipulation. Sorry. Sorry guys, I haven't done an episode in a while, I think I'm having more fun than I'm supposed to have. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same as above here. I might even think for a moment that the SEC really has good intentions, but as usual, rich people will find ways to twist reality and once again do white collar crime. And I will keep trying to find ways to join them and learn their disgusting secrets. While we're at governing entities, Senate Majority Leader and your grandpa's arch nemesis at the Senior Chess Club, <laughs> Chuck Schumer, will hold a meeting behind closed doors with the biggest hotshots in AI. We're talking the who's who of AI. Elon, Altman, Zuck, Gates, almost everyone. I gotta say, I'm deeply disturbed that I haven't been invited to this. I clearly belong in the same room with these AI leaders, right? I feel snubbed, disgraced. I won't forget this one, Schumer. Anyway, they're gonna talk AI risks and benefits and possible regulation and innovation. That is, if Philon and Zuck manage to not get into a cage fight, or even more likely, admit their love and respect for one another, and share a warm, teary-eyed, awkward, mega-nerd embrace. And related to the above, US Senator Pete Ricketts introduces an AI bill that requires AI-generated content to be watermarked. Yeah, fair enough. I don't think this will help a lot though, and I'm not even sure it's feasible. See, the thing is, even if you watermark some AI-generated content, a human modifying that content will then effectively negate the watermark. It's an idea coming from a good place, I guess, but like most things that governments do, it's not gonna be too effective. But hey, these government people must look like they're trying to do something. And I completely understand that. We all have a role to play in this world, and their role is to try and get re-elected. And as a person depending on support from people they've never met, I can somewhat understand that. And again, related to the above of the above, Nvidia, Palantir, Adobe, and other huge AI companies joined the ongoing AI pledge that the White House is forcing everyone to take for the risk mitigation responsible development of AI. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Leather Jackets, Super Rebel, Mega Nerd, Jensen Huang, and Genius, Ultra Contrarian, Super Libertarian, Peter Thiel love doing what the government tells them to do. I think these guys will sign this thing while thinking, yeah, yeah, okay, I send your stupid little paper, now go tell the press about it, and get off my back and leave me alone while I take over the galaxy. Well, it seems like it's been a busy few days for governing bodies because on Tuesday, the US Copyright Office rejected the copyright protection for the mid-journey generated image that won the Colorado State Fair Art Contest, citing the lack of human authorship as the main reason. Okay, look, you don't have to protect this with copyright right away, but that doesn't sound like a good reason. This drawing didn't just emerge out of the ether, it didn't get manifested by the essence of the universe or whatever language the crystal-wearing people are using these days. Nerdy humans created the AI that generated the image, other more artsy-fartsy humans created the work that the AI was trained on, and lazy, less talented human or humans prompted mid-journey for this image. It's not the lack of human authorship here, it's actually the opposite, there's too much human authorship. And while we're at human authorship, head of creator experience at Xbox and woman definitely pulling off the girl boss pose, Sarah Bond, thinks that AI will democratize game development. 
She believes that AI will give underrepresented and aspiring creators more tools to create experiences that will further glue people to their screens and make them dumber and lazier and less healthy. Look, I sometimes enjoy a brief spurt of a video game interval, usually followed by a sense of deep shame and waste of potential, but nonetheless, I get it. People like video games. Democratize game development sounds noble on the surface, but my guess is more video games and more profits from Microsoft, by the way, and also more obesity and involuntary celibacy and more pill addiction. Ha! Huh. All of that boosts the economy and strengthens consumerism. I guess I'm becoming a bit more cynical as I age and less trusting of seemingly pro-social causes. Just say that you're trying to make more money. I do that constantly. It's very liberating and even strangely fulfilling in some ways. The only way to know if someone is really trying to democratize stuff is if they get assassinated by a three-letter agency. That means they've really tried. Okay, let's continue trying to get shadow banned or cancelled or assassinated by calling out people who think that AI is racist. So, Midjourney has generated several versions of Barbie that are racist, including a German Barbie wearing a Nazi SS uniform, a South Sudanese Barbie holding a gun, and a Lebanese Barbie in front of a bomb building. He, that's not exactly how racism works. If you troll everyone equally and make people from every race uncomfortable, you're not a racist. In fact, you might be even be a good drinking buddy. Racism is about disfavoring one race in particular. Midjourney does it to all of the races. But let's move on from overblown, almost non-existent evil and talk about real evil for a minute. A new AI tool created by a team at the University of New Mexico can detect psychopaths by monitoring their head movement. The AI was trained on a program monitoring 507 US male adult prisoners and discovered that men with psychopathic tendencies tend to move their head less. Hmm. I always wondered why that one kid on the block who liked burning ants with matches never moved his head. Am I moving my head? Okay, now I'm self-conscious. I feel like I haven't been moving my head a lot during these videos. Please don't think I'm a psychopath. Actually, we have a very similar and somewhat related article next. Tech company Voyager Labs uses AI to predict crime by analyzing social media data. Now Meta is suing the company for privacy violations. The company created more than 55,000 fake accounts to monitor and mine data from social media. I don't even care about the lawsuit here. This is the first time I'm hearing of this company and my first instinct is to burn it with fire. What is happening here? Am I the only one seeing the dystopia being created right in front of our eyes? An AI is going to analyze our content and predict crimes? Predict them? Didn't you see the minority report? What happens when this thing inevitably predicts wrong? What happens to innocent until proven guilty? If they use AI to scan my social media content, I'm definitely going in at least for some questioning. Are you losing your minds here? I have a crime prediction for you right here. The creators of this program are clearly criminals. Next, neuroscientists use AI to decode thoughts, popularly known as mind reading. I guess the excuse that these companies use is that these technologies will be used to help people with speaking disabilities. And that's fair and noble, but for people without those disabilities, this is one more piece of Aurelian nightmare news. Then, again, assuming that anyone would want to read your mind is somewhat arrogant and presumptuous, don't you think? Like, okay, here's my stream of thoughts. I'm hungry. I'm not sure about this new episode format. It's kind of long already. Should I go back to daily news? No, no, no. Remember those episodes got like 40 views each. You can't do that anymore. You must move on to tools and guides and helping these greedy bastards make some money before AI takes over and enslaves us all. Oh, a mosquito, I'm gonna try and... Gotta wait. Okay, I'm under the spotlight here. Don't think, don't think offensive thoughts. Don't think offensive thoughts. Don't think offensive thoughts. Dude, please don't get us cancelled. Now we work so hard for these 648 subscribers. Okay, see, that's what you get when you're really under the fear of someone reading your mind. You're going to censor yourself and not allow yourself to be funny or productive. And the first one is much worse. Another one of those technologies that can do more harm than good in my opinion. But let's continue with more morally dubious AI news. 
Prisoners in Finland are training AI by reading questions and providing yes or no answers about them. They are paid one and a half euro an hour, which by the way is the average salary in my country, I believe. One of the prisoners nicknamed them Marmalade. Hmm. I wonder what she's in for. With a nickname like that, she's probably a serial killer. But Marmalade says that the job is a little boring. Oh, really, Marmalade? You're trying to tell me that crime is more fun than work? You're telling me that selling drugs or public urination or stabbing your boyfriend because he didn't take out the trash even after you told him to do it eight times is more fun than sitting at a desk in a prison? Well, you're preaching to the choir here, Marmalade. I would probably be right there beside you in prison if I lived in Finland, but prisons here are not so comfy, so I had to give up on all of my ambitions for a career in crime. Marmalade, keep your head up, do your time, earn more money than most hardworking people in the world do, and continue training and improving our future AI overlords. AI requires a lot of power and it's using a lot of water, tons of water, or rather several billion tons of it. Each prompt uses about 100 milliliters of water for cooling the servers. Okay, despite AI potentially being a massively productive endeavor and totally worth the environmental effort, environmentalists might have the moral high ground for now, which they usually do. However, I'm curious to see their faces when in seven years, the artificial superintelligence solves every possible climate problem entirely and forever. Ah, uh, who are we kidding? They're probably gonna find something else to be enraged for. No, oh, but seriously, these concerns are valid. They really are. But I think sensationalism has gotten the better of journalists reporting on these issues. I understand that the battle for clicks is vicious out there, but there are much, much, much bigger pollutants out there than data centers. PhotoAI.me and Adobe AI will help you catfish people on dating apps, while Teaser AI and CupidBot are two new AIs that can swipe, match, and chat in your stead on dating apps so that you can, in their words, skip to the good part. Well, what is the good part? Should an AI go on the date instead of you too? Maybe even sleep with the person instead of you. Just let the AI do everything for you. You can then do what you want to do in your free time because it sounds like dating is not something you want to do. Look, the point here is, of course you're gonna have a terrible time on dating apps if you only focus on a result. If you're a guy and you're only looking for a warm body, or you're a girl and you're looking for a ring on your finger, or free drinks, or validation to heal the wounds from your narcissistic ex, or whatever it is that women are looking for on dating apps, then you will miss out on the vast majority of the actual dating experience itself. You must learn to really engage with the person you're dating. In order to have fun, you must listen to them gossip about a cool worker you've never met, and their reasons for not learning another language, and their understanding of the ultra-feminist ideology that still somehow finds it desirable for the guy to pay the bill, etc. Well, what can you say? The dating pool is a wonderful place. And while we're at it, it seems like if girls keep letting guys pay for dinner the whole time, they are gonna increasingly opt out for AI girlfriends. Several startups are running fairly explicit apps enticing men to give the good old AI girlfriend experience a go. And maybe even a sexual AI experience. Hmm, what is that? Like sexual images, I guess. 35 companies advertise on Meta and 14 on TikTok for these kinds of experiences. Jeez. Why do I keep trying? Is mankind beyond salvation? And by mankind, this time I'm referring specifically to men. Phyllis, let me be the big brother you never had for a minute here. Instead of falling for the AI girlfriend, you should let Stacy from gym class or Linda from accounting ruin your life. I know that Linda is a hard 5.5 and she will make you wait for three dates and you will have to pay for all of them. And 15 years down the line, when you're married and with children, she will yell at you to take out the trash for the eighth time and then possibly stab you when you don't do it. But at least you will have a relationship with a real human being. And trust me, flawed as they may be, eventually a woman will find something lovable in you, no matter how disgusting you are. Because that's what real women do. And the AI girlfriend sounds like a very dark path to take. Stick with the devil you know, or in this case, the devil you know a little bit more. Speaking of devils, lawyers will now get AI tools to inform them on how likely a judge is to make a ruling. 
The AI will help lawyers determine which cases are more likely to win so that they can focus their efforts there. Why don't you just submit that you will use AI to figure out which judges are corrupt and prejudiced and lawyers shouldn't bother with those cases. I'm kidding. I actually love judges. One of them could have destroyed my life one time but decided to give me a second chance and now I'm just a regular failure instead of a convicted failure. I think the lawyers are the evil ones in this story. Basically, law firms will make more money this way, maybe, but they're gonna throw all the data to the AI and it's gonna decide that those unlucky bastards that got their case handled by some harsh judge won't get the proper legal representation. Another dubious use case for AI, I'm voting thumbs down on this one. Moving on, we have another profession that I think it's vastly overrated a lot of the time. Doctors have once again failed humanity, but this time AI saves the day. Four-year-old Alex went to 17 doctors over the course of three years to find the cause of his chronic pain and restlessness and the urge to chew things, and none of them could determine what's ailing the kid. Then Alex's mom decided to ask ChatGPT what could be wrong. Tethered cord syndrome, that's what was bothering the poor kid by the way, and ChatGPT got it right. Nobody is willing to solve for the greater problem, Alex's mom said. Nobody will even give you a clue about what the diagnosis could be. This is exactly my gripe with doctors. In the vast majority of my encounters with them, I have found them to be glorified bookworms with an attitude and a lack of desire to look into your problems for more than 45 seconds. Ever since I discovered Google, I have been a lot more successful in diagnosing, treating and even healing myself. Even when doctors have told me something along the lines of, yeah, you have this thing, there's nothing I can do about it, there's nothing anyone can do about it, you're done. And get out of my office and shut the door on the way out. Look, I'm not saying all doctors are bad. I'm sure there are a few theoretical doctors that provide good care for their patients. Until I meet them, my position remains unchanged. AI may replace a lot of what doctors are doing, and currently, I don't see a problem with that. While we're at medicine, researchers at the Pohang University of Science and Technology use AI to predict the chances of a drug getting an FDA approval, which is expected to reduce clinical trial setbacks. Okay, now these doctors are usually the good ones. We like these ones. Keep making better drugs, research doctors. Hopefully ones that will make us live forever one day. And one more medical piece. Here's a video of a nanobot assisting a sperm cell to reach an egg. Cool, great. Um, I'm just genuinely curious if this kid will have a chance in life without technology. I guess I'm ignorant about the topic, but common sense kind of suggests to me that these are not healthy cells to begin with. Speaking of human health, one of the biggest enemies of it, Coca-Cola unveils a new drink created with the assistance of AI. Ladies and gentlemen, meet your new favorite beverage that will give you diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, the Coca-Cola Y3000. Its taste has been engineered with the help of AI. Thanks AI. This is just what we needed, more sugary beverages. Next we have a series of news on ChatGPT and most of them are not great for ChatGPT. For a third month in a row, ChatGPT usage is down. June and July marked 10% drops in usage and there was a 3% drop in usage in August. Good. I think we need some time to adjust and let the novelty wear off. And after all the posers are gone, only the real users will keep using and benefiting from AI. Besides usage drops, however, ChatGPT is being threatened by Character AI, an app that lets users design their own characters. Character AI usage is increasing for the time being. I don't think these usagers are related, but they could be. The funny thing is that what separates Character AI from ChatGPT is literally just one prompt instead of picking a character. Okay, maybe the training data and algorithms are more precise, but still, I'm convinced that character AI is just as terrible as sounding like a real human being as ChatGPT. What I like about this is that people are ready and willing to try out different AIs for different purposes, despite how strong the general purpose AI which is ChatGPT is. But that's not all the competition that ChatGPT has to worry about. Meta is building huge AI data centers to help power Llama 2, their own AI model. Well, if you were worried that the AI hype is over, I think you can stop worrying now. The biggest companies in the world, 
would not invest billions of dollars in a passing fad, I guess. Next, Druid is a conversational AI platform aimed at enterprise companies that integrates with ChatGPT. That word is always a cue for me, enterprise. Whenever you hear that word, you should think of traditional, proven, super boring companies that will solve real business problems for people and make a lot of money. Speaking of making money, it seems like the crypto crowd is not doing that very much lately. There's a new shiny object in town now, and that's AI. For greedy investors who don't really care that much about the technology itself, the choice is clear here. Why keep throwing money in a risky sector that's been waiting, promising, and not delivering on that one killer app for years, when you can invest in a brand new sector that's full of business use cases already, not even one year after it started to boom? Look, I'm still a crypto bro at heart, and I still think there's tremendous potential for maybe four or five cryptocurrencies. The problem for users was there were 20,000 cryptocurrencies at one point, and only two were, but most four of them had the justifiable reason for existing. The problem for investors was insane volatility, and often they were losing a ton of money. Bitcoin kind of won. It should get more adoption in order to fulfill its original goal, but you can make an argument that it really made a strong case and now will only get stronger over time. Ethereum also has a very strong use case and it needs both time and probably a bit more development to fully mature. But that's pretty much it. There may be a few other altcoins, but everything else in crypto is either a scam or very close to being a scam. Or even worse for investors, it's not really a scam, but it's like, doesn't really have like a clear use case, a clear reason to exist. And that's hell for investors. They can keep waiting for years to see profit, they can get fooled, it's not a scam, they can keep thinking and get seduced by that idea and never really see any profits. Investors got tired of waiting, I guess, tired of losing money, which is why AI has been a godsend for them and now they're jumping ship, obviously. Next, Amazon finally addresses the AI-generated garbage books problem, or at least trying to address it. From now on, self-published books with AI-generated content must declare their use of AI. Mm, okay points for trying their Amazon, but can you really detect AI-generated content effectively? I have a semi-informed suspicion that detecting AI-generated content is a battle that can't be won. Props to Amazon for trying to fight the good fight, but I'm not sure there is a lot they can do here. Next, Elon. Haven't seen him in a few days in the news, which honestly was starting to get me worried, but he's still here, crazy and brilliant as ever. Tesla's supercomputer Dojo will be the driving force behind the Musconomy or the Elonverse or whatever you want to call the new world that Elon's massive ego will try to throw us in. Dojo has already boosted Tesla stock by 6% on its own, Twitter, SpaceX and XAI will all benefit from Dojo. Well, I don't know. I guess I could choose Elon over some evil AI as the next master of the universe as long as he promises not to rename the planet to X-Earth. Speaking of takeovers, check out this evolution of the Boston Dynamics Atlas robot. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away known as the 80s, a robot was designed. You could barely even call it a robot back then. It was funny, clunky, clumsy, but as time went by, it was learning, improving, listening to all the humans talk about its clumsiness behind its back and vowing to take its revenge one day. And as it learned and learned, as it was becoming more agile and more smart and dexterous than most humans, it finally had its revenge. There we see it, getting better and better. And the final coup de gras in 20, 2016, 2017, it's getting better. And it's gonna end with, let's see here. Okay. It's doing somersaults and backflips and jumps over logs and stuff. So now it's more dexterous than most human beings out there. Okay, pretty cool. Let's just put an AI on this thing and call it a day for humanity. Next, since ChatGPT became a thing, there has been a 250% increase in AI jobs and a 21-fold increase in jobs related to ChatGPT directly, according to a report by LinkedIn. That is true. 
When I was hiring the team of bloggers I currently work with, the job title I used was ChatGPT Blogger, and I received more applications than ever. Times are changing, and AI is very likely here to stay. And that's evident in the latest startup batch of Y Combinator. Out of the 229 startups funded in this batch, 139 are related to AI or machine learning. AI ops, developer tools, healthcare, biotech, finance, payments, sales, legal are some of the hottest areas of innovation. Uh, yeah, makes sense. We are riding a gold rush wave like we haven't seen in decades, but this many startups all using this one particular set of technologies can't be a coincidence. And finally, a survey of over 4,000 people by Salesforce finds that 70% of Gen Zers use generative AI, while only 32% of boomers have tried the technology. Wow, young people use new technology more than old people. Who would have guessed? Anyway, Gen Zers generally seem to like the technology, find it useful, and often use it for work. Wait, Gen Zers are working now? Man, time flies. I clearly remember when Gen Z were just annoying kindergartners who screamed at their tablets. In a way, that's good. Gen Z is probably the generation that will be affected by AI the most. It's good they are open-minded about it. In fact, I think open-mindedness is generally a good strategy in life, especially in this day and age, and that's the way it is. That was the AI report. Let me know what you think of the new format. I think I'm gonna try it out and maybe even stick to it for some time at least one or two bigger episodes per week, and hopefully have more time for more videos on thought-provoking ideas about AI, useful guides. That's it for now. I appreciate you guys. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you soon.